everyone, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Steph Garafa, Content Mon Ma Marketing Manager for DevCX, and guest moderator for this week's chat on your cybersecurity career and how you can get started, get certified, and get hired. Before we get started, a reminder, we'll be taking your questions live at the end of the show. So use the Cisco Chat hashtag on Twitter or post your questions in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Joining us today, we have James Risler, Senior Manager of Security and Collaboration Content Engineering here at Cisco. Jim's passion is in cybersecurity education, and he's worked to improve the delivery and content of training materials for Cisco security solutions over the last 10 years of his career at, at Cisco. However, Jim brings over 25 years of IT industry experience to our discussion today. Thanks for joining us today, Jim. It's a pleasure to have you. Steph. Delighted to be here. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to introduce my next guest, um, Christian Veer. Veer is a senior technical leader and security evangelist for Cisco DevNet. His career at Cisco spans over 20 years, and before DevNet, he's worked as an engineering manager for Cisco Security, developing Cisco Firepower REST APIs. He's a champion for security, automation, and programmability, as well as DevNet certifications. Veer, thanks so much for joining. We're so happy to have you on the show. Uh, glad to be here, Steph. Great. And our next guest is Jenny Gay. Jenny is a senior network security analyst at Export Development Canada. Among her list of certifications, she also currently holds several from Cisco, including a CCNA and a Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate. In addition to being a passionate learner and advocate for Cisco certifications, Jenny also has a love for teaching. She uses her spare time to lead study groups that help others prepare for security certifications. It's great to have you, Jenny. Welcome to Cisco Chat. Thank you for having me, Steph. Great, all right, let's get started, everyone. So cybersecurity threats are becoming increasingly more sophisticated and dangerous. In fact, 53% of cybersecurity attacks cause over $500,000 in damage to organizations. Especially during unprecedented times, there are new opportunities for attackers to penetrate security measures. As workloads that move off premises into remote environments, they offer widespread access to the network. It's without question that it's more important than ever for security teams to contain and prevent attacks. But if you're new to IT or you haven't worked in cybersecurity, you might wonder what security professionals actually do. So Jim, can you tell us a little bit about what a day in a security operations center looks like? Well, thank you very much, Steph, for having me again. I appreciate it. Um, well, they're not all the same. So every SOC is different. SOCs have uh, organizational objective, but you can look at SOCs in terms of tier one support versus tier two and tier three. As you move, if an entry-level person comes into a SOC, they're usually the front line for the inbound work tickets and alerts coming in. So they're the, they have about 20 minutes to assess the ticket, see if it's in, been in their playbook before. If it hasn't, then they have to determine what's the escalation process that's documented, how do we get somebody that's the next tier up to take a look at this to determine if it's a real threat or not. So example, if the machine is beaconing out to the internet, and a seasoned professional sees it, they might determine that it's a type of threat that they've seen before, whereas they might see it and say, We've, we haven't seen this threat before, we haven't seen this unusual activity, let's start a case on it and document it, because the playbook has nothing specifically wrapped around that. So, you know, it just depends on what your organizational mission objective is, but Think of it, tier one, front line, you're taking the inbound tickets, issues, and problems, and then you're determined where to escalate them to. As you move up in, in your career, you basically become more experienced, and then you might be doing investigation, hunt detection, and threat research, something along that line. Hope that helps. Yes, and that's a lot of information. So if we backtrack, um, one of the first steps to earning a position in a security operations center is through a certification that validates your skills as a security professional. So Jim, we have a variety of certifications available for security at Cisco. What are some of the key differences between Cisco's cyber ops certifications and the security tracks? Oh, great question, thank you. Um, I think you have to kind of look at it in a very simplistic uh, example of you uh, engineers, the CCMP track, are like they build the security for the castle. 
So they're putting in the doors, the firewalls, the intrusion protection, the threat analysis tools, et cetera, et cetera. Then the cyber ops people are taking those tools and getting the feeds from them and then doing the research based on the current trends in the Internet and trying to tie those two together to see if somebody's broken in and how they broke in. So they're validating existing control. So one is build the castle. The other one is to look for somebody who's broken into the castle. Okay, so let's take a moment to have a closer look at the Cisco Certified CyberOps Associate Certification, our entry-level certification for cybersecurity, in this video. Security Operations Teams, or SOCs for short, have one mission, to protect business critical infrastructure, applications, and data. To do this, SOC teams need skilled workers called SOC analysts. The Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate Certification prepares you to work on a SOC team. To earn your certification, you pass one exam that covers the basics of cyber ops skills. The exam tests your knowledge of basic security concepts, plus monitoring, analysis, policies, and procedures. After you pass the exam, you are ready to take your place on the front lines defending against threats and responding to attacks. If you thrive in real-time high-stakes situations where you have to stay ahead of the game, Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate is for you. Take your place on the front lines. So when Cisco made the change to its new training and certification portfolio, we went from having a CCNA Cyber Ops certification to the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate certification, and now the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Professional. Jim, why did Cisco choose to create a Cyber Ops track that was separate from CCNA and CCNP? Well, I, you know, that's a, another great question. You're just packed full of them today. Um, <laughs> I would have to say that the engineering mindset and developing the securities are different from the person who's trying to determine if there's threats in the network. Uh, also, too, as we move into more of a, a DevOps environment where you're starting to use more security tools or custom tools and ad hoc uh, solutions, you need a different set of skills, number one. So those those skills were completely different than the engineering skills for building the castle. So we really wanted to start driving that. Plus, there was numerous gaps out there we're hearing from our customers. They don't have the training. The training is not out there uh, to fill these needs. So we wanted to kind of help out our customers as well and, and, and help out Cisco. Absolutely. So for those who have migrated to the new CCNA from a CCNA security certification, should they work towards a Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate Certification or the CCNP Security Certification? Which do you recommend? That's, that's, that's an excellent question as well. Um, it's, it's a challenge one. You kind of have to look internally at yourself. You have to decide, do you want to be the individual who builds out the security controls in the organization, the firewalls, the IPS intrusion? Is that where you want to specialize? Or do you want to specialize in catching the bad guy? If you want to catch the bad guy and, and, and help protect the organization from threats that may have already entered the door, then you need to transition over to cyber ops. The great thing is if you do have a CCNA secu uh, security certification, you have the under fundamentally underlying pieces that are needed for you to understand and take it to the next level. You understand how network security works, how the threats are logged and alerts are generated, so you're a step ahead and well on your way for the cyber ops. Great. So what kind of job roles does a cyber ops associate certification qualify you for or a CCNP? There's, there's, quite, a, there's quite a bit of them depending upon the organization, but tier one would be like a, an entry-level security analyst. Uh, you could be an investigator a threat hunter. If you go to the NIST 800-181, uh, they have a bunch of job roles out there uh, that list specific skills, and that could be a good matrix to look at. Um, then, then you can focus on where your area of interest lies. But I've just named a few. Forensic analysis, 
that one would take a lot a little bit longer to get up to um, that you would have to take more courses past the associate level hope that helps definitely so the first date to test for the new Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Professional Certification is November 17th of this year. So this certification validates your ability to detect and respond to cybersecurity threats, manage incidents, automate tasks, and secure the sensitive information of your organization. Jen, can you tell us more about the kinds of roles that professionals who achieve the Cyber Ops Professional Certification can apply for? So one of the other ones I didn't think of, and, and thanks for reminding me, was you could be an entry-level person, could be audit and compliance support. So the company's deployed a firewall. Somebody needs to go in and validate that the firewall has the particular rules on it, or you have an intrusion protection system in place. It is the process for auditing and compliance support with the organization, the security controls, and any external organization like HIPAA compliance or or a POC that you are required to are your compliant towards. So those are just listing some of the examples. Investigator are always in high demand out there. So those are just a few off the top of my head. Great, that's very helpful. And, and thank you so much for your perspective and knowledge. Um, I'd like to turn to my next guest, Veer, to learn more about the way and approach security and the skills that can help them excel. Veer, coming from DevNet, we hear a lot about automation. Can security be automated? Hey, uh, hey, Steph, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think we should automate security. And one of the reasons is because um, if you look at the word threats, and I think you kind of touched on it in the very beginning, and, and Jim also mentioned multiple times, um, is that the threats are evolving, they're becoming more sophisticated. Um, the adversaries are very well funded. Um, they are sometimes stats, um, states sponsored as well. And so those attacks are targeted um, and the tactics and techniques used are quite sophisticated now. So if you uh, compare it, let's say with networking, in networking we spend a lot of time in architecting it and testing it and once it is set, we release that uh, topology and, and then we pass data through it and we just tweak its efficiency. But if you look at security, threats are evolving every day, they're shifting, we see thousands of new threats or derivative threats. So it kind of becoming a scalability issue to manage security. And wherever there is a scalability issue, the, the correct answer is we should automate tasks because that's how the teams can survive. Um, and so if, it doesn't matter whether you are red team or blue team, you have a repetitive task and you should think about automating it. Or already a lot of organizations are already automating it. So answer your question, yes, we should automate security. Great, thank you. So what role do APIs play in how IT teams manage security? So if you look at the new sophisticated uh, security defense um, um, products out there or solutions out there, uh, APIs is the center part of it. Um, so the core is that um, whether we are doing prevention, whether we are doing hunting or gathering intelligence, it doesn't matter, or we are working on response, we are remediating, everything or all the products are, are based on APIs. And what APIs helps us, they help us sort out the workflow very, very easily. We can automate those tasks which we repetitively do, whether they are prescriptive or iterative, we can automate them. So there where API helps us. So it decreases the time of detection and remediation. The other part is we should think about like automating simple tasks. So if you are starting your journey, like where should I start and why should I do it? Why? Because you save time, your productivity goes up and you can scale really well. And what you should do, any task which you do repetitively, um, like for example, if you are collecting threat intel from multiple sources, you can automate that. Um, or you're changing, based on those intel, you're changing your configuration of firewall or your DNS security, you can automate that as well. So you're gathering that these are bad domains or malicious or risky domains, 
you can just create rules and scripts can do that they can you can just create rules on firewall create rules on your uh, dns blacklist or your endpoint blacklist so think about those tasks which you repetitively do using UIs. You can actually automate them. That way you can remove a lot of error. And that helps. So yeah, APIs are core stuff. Well, we're very well aware of the cultural process changes brought by DevOps principles in our IT organizations. But what is DevSecOps? Okay, so uh, I mean, I hope that my understanding, a little bit of understanding what is DevOps is about. It's it's kind of like a cultural shift which has happened. Um, it is very, very um, well accepted in all the architect, um, IT organizations. And what you see is that the goal of DevOps is continuous integration delivery, right? Um, so you are trying to automate uh, provisioning of infrastructure, um, automation of a lot of builds and tests, continuous testing, release automation, continuous monitoring, monitoring. Basically, the idea is if you have to fail, fail fast, and so you can improve the process. So what happens is that security become kind of like afterthought um, initially when this happened. So now DevSecOps, and we kind of try to answer that a little bit with app security and, and those concepts came in. But now, if you look at the center of the concept is DevSecOps. What it means is actually, is that security started to shift left. Uh, what I mean is that it's not towards the end of release process that you will do the, think about security. You, you start moving security to the left in your whole DevOps uh, lifecycle so that every component is responsible for their security. And that way the coverage is bigger um, and you can actually do threat modeling in the very start when you are designing. And then you can figure out a lot of possible gotchas, right? Lots of, a lot of these very low hanging fruit, which actually attackers use, you can figure out in your process and, and make sure that security becomes part of the whole process, not just afterthought. So that's what DevSecOps is that at every stage in your DevOps lifecycle, you should be thinking about security. Thank you so much for explaining that. We're, we're also hearing a lot about SOAR. What does SOAR refer to and what can it offer security operations? Yeah, so SOAR is a, a concept which is get, gaining a lot of uh, traction. Um, basically, the idea is that um, can you Basically, the full form of SOAR is security, orchestration, automation, and response. So all these components are getting basically um, automated. So if you look at the um, the few components in your in your operations team, which is like alert triage, prioritization of alert, like workflow, you have a workflow, a security workflow. Can you and you can you orchestrate and automate the workflow? Um, can you do case management? Can you do automation of case management? Can we increase more collaboration like chatbots who are fetching a lot of information for you before you even start discussing a case? Uh, threat hunting, uh, a lot of automation is happening around threat hunting, right? So proactively looking for threats um, and then investigation piece as well, and then response. So can you automate these components? So now business technical leaders are seriously thinking that they deploy uh, these um, heterogeneous uh, and multiple defense uh, solutions, uh, how can they actually orchestrate using single glass of pane of glass, or I don't know what the good word to use here, but they want it to have one workflow to be controlled through one source. And from that source, can they actually do their investigation? They, they can do their um, remediation. Is it possible? And Cisco has developed a product called now it's called SecureX, and it has two components in it. One is threat response, in which you do extensive research, and one is action orchestrator, where you actually orchestrate your workflow. So if you found some issues here, or you can actually chain multiple uh, things together, like for example, your threat intelligence and your remediation or response process. So yes, this, this field is evolving. It's gaining a lot of traction, and automation is the heart of it. Right. Um, well, what about what about offensive or offensive automation, um, such as vulnerability or pen testing? Um, so 
Yeah, there is already a lot of automation happening in that field. So um, the red team sides of thing, if you look at um, the whole attack simulations are happening. So a lot of companies actually are saying that we can be your like uh, red team as a service. <laughs> so they are doing the full sim simulation or you can double up set up scripts which generate like reliable artifact corresponds to the techniques in the attack framework or other frameworks, whatever framework you're using in your organization. So all that can be automated, right? It comes down to actually individual red, time, red team member, in my opinion. Uh, they may take time to uh, develop simple scripts and they can build this collection of scripts which can be used by in, if you look at my DevSecOps lifecycle in any lifecycle anywhere, even by developers, right? Um, so that you can actually figure out problems beforehand. What I mean to say, there are common threats which is always been used by attackers. For example, misconfigs in your containers or in your Kubernetes environment. Um, basically on infrastructure, you misconfigured some host and that's what they take advantage of. You, instead of waiting towards the end to test it or something wrong happens to test it, you, you can use those scripts which has been developed by Red Team by any developers in that lifecycle. So that way you can actually cut down a lot of these attack campaigns before even they are launched. Um, so hence, yes, automation makes perfect sense there and they're doing it on a large scale actually. Excellent. Um, and how can developers work more effectively within a security operations team? What are some challenges to overcome in the work environment or opportunities? All right, that's a great question. So um, I think if we see in future, if in future the the teams, security teams will compromise comprise of a lot of like people with multiple skills, and developers will be one of the core because as we evolve into more DevOps or SecOps or Sex uh, DevOps type of culture, so DevOps have great opportunity in security teams. Sorry, developers have great uh, opportunity in in security teams. They bring in a component which is more writing awesome core to and 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 they have to work with security teams who are bringing a lot of concepts of security so if you're a developer and you want to enter um, a security field the great way to go is to do something similar to like um, the sec the secops uh, the, sorry the cyber ops associate um, certification because you're not gaining a lot of day-to-day -day work let's say you are a devops engineer you you're awesome in writing code you know all the automation concepts, you know all the automation tools out there really, really well. But what you lag is security concepts. And this will actually help you develop those concepts and give you a hands-on experience as well because there are labs associated if you're doing training. Once you pass this exam, you gain a confidence, like if you are in an interview process, you come across as a person who actually knows stuff. And your developer skills will not go away because you are pretty good at it. So in my opinion, if you combine them together, you are very powerful because if you, what I mentioned in my past few questions is that developers are going to be core part of a modern security operations team. So it's a great opportunity for developers. Thank you so much for your insight, Veer. Um, you know, I, I really like to learn more about the experience of becoming a cybersecurity professional. And uh, who better to share their experience but Jenny, a Cisco certified cyber ops professional. So Jenny, how did you get your start in IT? Hey Steph, so that's a great question. I actually was tinkering around with an old family computer that we had just replaced. And I decided I wanted to take it apart. What makes this thing tick? So I took it all apart and then I, I couldn't figure out how to put it back together for the life of me. and that fascinated me and I was like I need I need to know more about computers and then I got into my high school actually offered a Cisco networking academy program when I was in grade 11 and the whole point of it was you took networking classes for a year to get the CCNA the CCNA you know way back the original one and that class ignited such a passion in me for learning and I just that's what I went for Great. So, so ultimately, why did you choose a Cisco certification in particular? Well, honestly, it was because of that high school course. Because at the end of the course, you could get your CCNA, and, and I, I'd never heard of certifications before then, but I knew I liked networking. 
So I chose Cisco because that was what my school curriculum had and it was awesome. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. Um, so what inspired you to pursue a career in cybersecurity? Well, it's interesting because I was actually studying for non-security certifications. You know, I've got other industry certifications and each one would have a small bit on cybersecurity. You know, a chapter here and there about, and then I heard about SOCs, security operations centers. So I started to look into it and I was like, well, this is really interesting. And I decided that I wanted to try to go into cybersecurity. I mean, I thought I have the IT knowledge, surely the cybersecurity can play off that and it can be something that's new and exciting for me to get into. Great, so I'm thinking when you were preparing for your Cisco certifications, what, what did your study routine look like? I'm thinking because for those watching who are interested in getting started, it would be helpful, helpful for them to get an idea of the time you invested into studying and preparing. Yeah, so what I like to do originally is I look at the exam objectives because all the certifications have an exam objective page that tells you different domains the exam covers. And I will print that out and I'll go through and I'll take a first look and see what do I know already on here? You know, check that off. What do I need help with? And maybe I don't understand. I'll mark those and then I will go and research those and take courses on whatever it is that I don't understand. And I'll put notes in a notebook and then I just read those notes over and over again. So for me, it's like one to two hours a day I would spend studying until I felt like I was ready, which was usually about a month, I guess I'd say. Wow, that's, that's fast. That's a lot, <laughs> a lot of information, really good for you. Um, so you achieved the CCNA Cyber Ops certification, which migrated over to the new Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate certification last February. Now that Cisco has completely updated its training and certification portfolio, do you have plans for another certification? Yeah, absolutely. I want to get the cyber ops professional certification because it looks so interesting and it's a perfect fit for where I am right now. Like it's made for people who have been in the industry for a while. And honestly, if I didn't already have the cyber ops associate, I would go for the professional because you don't even need to have the associate anymore with the Cisco certification restructuring. So to me, that's so cool. You can get this really, you know, like exciting certification from a well-respected company like Cisco when you're halfway through your career. And I just love that. So me, it's CCNP CyberOps. That's definitely what's next. I completely agree. And it, yeah, that sounds great. Um, so what advice would you like to share with those who are thinking about pursuing a CyberOps certification? Honestly, the first thing I would do, I'd say do it. It's a great certification. Like it's, in my opinion, it's the best entry level cybersecurity certification. Um, like I actually got my first cybersecurity job while studying for the cyber ops um, examination. And because I'd been studying all this information, I aced my technical interview. So, I mean, it's, you're going to learn so much by doing the cyber ops certification. It's vendor neutral. It's got all the base knowledge and it's really good for getting into like a security operations center role. Great. Um, so what's a way that someone might um, find that they're successful in cybersecurity? What kinds of qualities would somebody have? I guess natural curiosity because that's what it was for me if you're naturally curious and you like to dig into the reason for something then you will absolutely be successful in cybersecurity. i mean there's so many positions available but especially when you're working in a sock if you have that want to understand why something has happened why something broke why this attack happened you know how did they get in then that will help you Absolutely, because the curiosity will lead you to learn new things. And it's like a, a vicious curiosity cycle. So that's the absolute, like, number one way I think you know you'd be successful is if you always want to know more and improve. Security job roles. 
um, what, what are some things that hiring managers would be looking for that indicate someone's the right person for the job? Well, it's interesting because I think a lot of people think that when you go into these interviews, you have to know everything. But from what I'm seeing, hiring managers are looking for the right person. So they want somebody that's going to fit in the culture, have good soft skills, have a little technical knowledge, but they can always train you. So for me, it's especially, and I find hiring managers will do this. They ask you questions where you may not know the answer and it's a test because it's okay to say, Hey, you know, I don't know, but this is what I think it is. And that's something that will serve you well, even once you've got your first job. So for me, it's just remember that they're looking for the right person. So you be yourself and prep for the interview, but don't be afraid to say, you know, I don't know where I'm actually studying this right now, or I will take a course on it, things like that. So let's pick it right back up. And I'd like to uh, take some questions from our community watching online. Um, can everyone hear me this time? <laughs> okay, Sounds good to me. Good, good. Let's see. So our first question is, what's the first step and what do I need to be ready to be a cyber hero? That's a really great question. Honestly, I'd say start researching, start taking free courses. Like you've got DevNet, which has got tons of stuff. You've got learning at Cisco start looking around for what you're passionate about. Maybe you, you can find your cyber niche right away. Great, I great, love that answer. Great. I love that, that's a good one. Uh, also, I'll uh, kind of bit surf off of that one. Uh, go to Talos, their website, and look at cyber attacks that they've identified out there and read through kind of the mindset about it, how they disassemble the attack. And, and if you find that stuff really interesting, then cyber ops is the space for you. Excellent, thank you. Okay, moving on to our next question from Shamal on YouTube. Will there be demand for traditional network engineers in the future? Uh, That's a good one for a beer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, network engineers bring a lot of uh, knowledge with respect to how network works. And if you look at most of the campaigns which are launched or attacks which are launched, they leverage network. So your experience is very valuable. It's just that you have to do a little bit of shift. And that shift is what these certs, which we talked about, both cyber ops and um, professional and associate will help you. Because like uh, Jenny mentioned, that when you look at exam objective, I think a lot of those objectives you already covered because you have excellent networking knowledge. So you can actually uh, catapult yourself based on that uh, base which you have built. Uh, so I would highly recommend that think about uh, shifting and uh, networking still has great opportunities. This is, the, the shift has become maybe, or go and leverage some of the DevNet certs uh, because now the shift is towards DevOps and so if you build few skills using DevNet Associate or uh, DevNet Professional, and you can specialize in multiple networking specializations. So those are other certs which you can add on to your current um, uh, experience. That's great, thank you. Um, ne the next question is from Gadana on LinkedIn. When will the Cisco cybersecurity certification courses be available? I guess that one's for me. Uh, we're <laughs> actively working on them very hard. We had a, a little bit of a setback from uh, a, a pandemic going on that delayed us in some, some things, but we're shooting for release in RQ3. So sometime around February, we're trying to release the first, or, first of two courses and more to come after that. So stay tuned. We will keep uh, keep you updated and uh, as we work through this. Thanks, Jim. Okay, our next question. I think anyone can answer this one on our panel today. Is the CCNA yeah. routing and switching still relevant? 
considering the prevalence of cyber attacks? An interesting yeah, I mean, question. Yeah, Go it ahead. goes back to goes back to the build the castle. You still you still need to have a fundamental knowledge. So that certification and training is still very relevant. Even if you're going to move into DevOps, DevSecOps, you need to have that foundation. Remember that slide we had up before where they showed the security analyst? If you can go back to that slide, look at the foundation, the gray bar on the bottom there, Steph. And that slide shows you that, you know, if you're getting into networking right here, that you need to understand how devices are configured, whether they're Cisco devices or anybody, anybody's devices out there, how they're configured, whether it's software or hardware, because that's where the mistakes are made. Remember, the attacker only needs to be right once, where you have to be right every time. And if you misconfigure something or something is misconfigured, I think Beer brought it up earlier, then that could be where you have a problem. That's why having this automation capability, being able to configure one device once and then push that out to all the devices using tools, standardize it, it mitigates those those issues. Plus, you got to look at performance monitoring, device monitoring. You got to be able to uh, dump that data out. So, I, I still say yes. I say that's a stepping stone. Think of it as a stepping stone of knowledge on your journey. Yeah, and the best defense is segmentation, and that knowledge comes from that cert. So, uh, yep. just I would say those concepts, and I mentioned before, networking concepts are extremely important to launch yourself into this career. So. Yeah, and as you, as like Veer said, as you realize and start researching, like you re read about attacks that have been successful, that one attack that was successful for the company with the red bullseye symbol, what they didn't do was they didn't segment their network. They got basically caught with a basically giant flat network. So it made it easy once the attacker got a foothold in to expand their scope and change up their attack techniques and then be successful. And yeah, I see Jenny nodding her head there. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is stuff we preach all the time, segment, segment, segment. Correct. Uh, our next question is from Eunice on LinkedIn. And this person says, is there a Cisco certification for penetration testing? Veer, do you want to take that? Um, I think Jim would be better answering that question. I think uh, uh, both our cyber ops associate and uh, professional kind of uh, dwell into a little bit in that side of the world, but I would let Jim answer that more in detail. Sure. Yeah, uh, we're, we're actively looking at that because that opens up a whole uh, can of uh, challenges in doing that. Um, we will be moving along that way, like Veer said, you will be getting the fundamental knowledge of what pen testing is. It's such a unique skill set and I have friends that actually do it, but not a, there, there's not a lot of work out there for that because companies hire it, test it, and move on, or they use their own internal people that actually have other jobs. They use tools such as the ones that Veer is helping us put out on, on the DevNet Sandbox to actually pen test your own environment, test your own environment, and automate things so that you aren't needing that pen testing you know, specific skill as much as you would think that you other companies are using it. Hope that helps. It does, absolutely. Our next question is from Bushen on Facebook. He says, I've completed CCIE security. I want to be an expert in cybersecurity. What suggestions do you have for me? Um, I think Vera and I can both take that one. Um, learn Definitely, I would say start learning scripting, Python, Ansible, learn the uh, software toolkit. That'd be the first thing to enhance your skills. Uh, those skills that you've learned in CCIE, you were developing, you were programming. Now you've got to think about taking those programming skills to the next level uh, mm -hmm. and also use them to help secure your organization and get that intelligence feeds. So I think this is a great spot for Veer to jump on here. Yes, I, I think developing those automation-related skills uh, is awesome. And if you have done CCIE, um, you have a very strong fundamental engineering concepts. If you add programmability to your portfolio, which I think Jim is alluding to, uh, go for DevNet professional certification. 
in which there is a specialization on security. <clears throat> so, uh, so that is one thing which probably very, very important and relevant uh, so that you can come out to be a person who has coverage both on the software side and engineering side. So, so that will make you more complete in my opinion. And cyber, um, cyber ops professional uh, is another element you can add actually because it focuses on the response. Uh, so there is another element which you can add to your um, uh, to your knowledge or at least to your certification uh, and kind of brings the relevance that you are more complete. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Peter on Cisco.com. The majority of cybersecurity jobs available seem to be for experienced professionals. Apart from getting certifications, how do you get a foothold in InfoSec? particularly those trying to make a career change? Um, I guess I would, uh, I would say start applying for those jobs anyway. I mean, when I was trying to switch from IT to cybersecurity, I flooded resumes out to every single company that had any sort of security job, hoping that one would eventually stick. And it did stick. I mean, a lot of these cybersecurity jobs, especially, they have these wish lists for this experience and that and 10 years experience in a technology that hasn't existed for that long. You just drop your resume in anyway. That would be my advice because that's what I did and it worked. Yeah, I, I really like that. I think I agree with her on that. Uh, try to find local uh, chapters. Uh, I know ISC Square has them in a lot of cities. There's B-sides events in a lot of cities around the world. Those are great cyber events. Go to those, network. Um, try to show that you are switching yourself by doing reading, uh, watching videos, reading from Talos. Start pretending like you're there doing the job now and that you need to increase your knowledge. And then I think naturally that will attract people. And the final thing I have to say is I've read a lot of job postings over my career here and seen it. And I think, like Jenny said, they are wish lists written primarily mostly by HR people that put everything in there, including the sink. And the lists are, are sometimes just not reality. So apply because sometimes they're, they're hoping that they can get that, but they'll take a subset of that. Yeah. And the other thing I would, I would add to what Jim just said is that look at the job description, what they're looking for. What are your strengths? Because your strength will match with at least five of those if they're asking for 10. So then you should send your resume and highlighting those strengths because that actually captures them that you have so much strength in these areas. For example, networking, or if you are a developer, you have strong developer skills. So mentioning that, or if you have a specialized certification done, mentioning that. Um, and so that helps, that significantly helps because when managers are looking to hire people, even if they find five very core trust building skills in, in your resume, they would probably be gonna give you a call. And that's what Jenny mentioned that you send it to people and one person, is, it takes only one person, right? So. Great, I, I feel like I could get a cybersecurity job just you know hosting this chat today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, Mary on LinkedIn, this will be our last question for today. Um, Mary on LinkedIn asks, is it worth it to do both CCNP security and cyber ops? She is currently studying for her CCNA. What advice can you offer her? That's a, that's a good one. I, uh, I'm somebody who's come from the engineering side. Uh, I'm kind of the guy been spearheading us to get into the cyber security space. So I'm going to be biased and say yes. Um, but again, you got to think about what does your career look like? Jenny, she really knew what she wanted. She was laser focused on it. She was, she had a target and she was going after it. Uh, figure out what your target is and then that'll make going after it that much easier. Um, but it wouldn't hurt, you know, having the knowledge on building the castle and then trying to find the threats in the castle, the two naturally go so well together. You're just, you know, it's a lot of work. So good luck to you. I, you know, I know you can do it. 
Okay, well, that's all we have time for today. I'd like to thank my guests, Jim Resler, Christian Veer, and Jenny Gay for their time and for a very interesting discussion. And to all of you watching for bearing with us, I'm just glad that I didn't get hacked. Um, <laughs> Is the season, right? We are too. <laughs> right, right. Well, that being said, October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and it's a great time for everyone to learn more about how you can stay more cyber aware. And it's always the perfect time to grow your skills and work towards a Cisco certification. Yeah, Jim mentioned Telos many times. This is how Telos is spelled. So just wanted to give a oh, shout great. out. <laughs> 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 Great place. Awesome. Read the blog. Uh, subscribe to their blog. They do podcasts as well. Awesome, awesome guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks for the podcast point. Great point. Podcast at Talos. Great. Yeah. Shameless plug. Yeah. Um, for everyone watching, uh, please visit Cisco.com/go/cybercerts to learn more about how you can use Cisco training and certifications to become a cybersecurity champion. And while you're there, make sure you enter our giveaway for free training and a Cisco exam voucher. For the latest course offerings, resources, study groups, and more, make sure you're following Learning at Cisco and Cisco DevNet on social media. You can also view the comments from today and keep the conversation going using the Cisco chat hashtag. We hope you enjoyed our chat today. I sure did. And that you take what you learned here as inspiration to get started, get certified, and get hired. Thank you all so much for watching today. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.